Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the Navient LCB 700 oil boiler. We're also gonna be putting in a vertical flue for a garage roof, and also we'll be wiring in the Navient smart heating controls. So here she is, the Navion LCB 736 kilowatt system boiler. So we've actually gone for the external model just because it will offer better sound insulation. As you can see inside, the sides are all insulated. So it's gonna be hopefully a little bit quieter and also it is going in the garage so there will be a build up of moisture in that there. So it should hold up a lot better than the internal version. So as you can see, it's quite futuristic looking compared to some um, oil boilers. It's more, or has more parts in common with a gas central heating boiler. So we've gone for the system boiler version because we're going to be fitting a low loss header. So we've got a 1575 pump down there, uh, built in expansion vessel. And the good thing about the um, external version is the digital control panel is actually inside. So that's very well protected. Um, it's finished in a really nice green colour, got a lock and a key um, just to keep it nice and safe if you was to put it externally. And one thing I do really like about these boilers is you've got these panels on the side which are easily removable and you can run all your pipe work through there and they're on both sides so yeah, it works really well. Right, it's a beautiful day down in East Sussex, so we decided to do the flue first. So this here is the garage roof, and what we've done already is we removed some of the tiles, gave ourselves access to poke the flue down, and then cut the tiles around the cowl of the lead slate. So you can see here, made a fairly neat job of it. I'm no roofer, but I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. So these Navian flues are actually plastic in construction and very similar to a condensing gas central heating boiler. I'm almost certain that these flues are the same as ones that you would find when installing a Wiesemann boiler. So really similar and familiar for me to work with. So now we've got a lead slate in, we've got this additional cow which sits on the top and you can spin it around depending on the pitch of the roof and that will help level the flue out as it pokes through vertically. So all we've got to do now is just drop it down through here and then we can work on it from below and then what I like to do is I normally will put a little self tapping screw down here just to make sure that it's nice and secure and it's never gonna blow off in any stormy weather right we're in the garage now and we're on the other side of that vertical flue so you can see it actually passes through some timber cladding so I'm gonna need to uh, sleeve this pipe with some non combustible material so from this point here, we're going to be running horizontally along and then dropping down vertically into this corner where the boiler is going to be situated. Okay, so we've lifted the boiler into the garage now and the boiler itself only weighs about 67 kilograms. So between two of you, it's quite a, quite a nice, easy lift. So what we've realized is we're actually going to want the plumbing to come out on the left. Um, so there's access panels here. And on either side, you actually have these holes that are already pre-cut, and then you can just um, knock those out. So they're on both sides, makes it easy to pipe up nice and neatly. And what you have in the kit when you buy the boiler is, you have some Pushfit 22 mil elbows, quite similar to like the shark bite fittings that you can get, um, and also two shark bite style lever valves. So. You can see here on the right hand side of the boiler, you've got your return and also you've got your flow. So what happens is you use these fittings, push that onto there, straight onto a lever valve. And then from that point, you can start piping up in copper. 
So I've got the top off the Navian oil boiler now and you can see how familiar it looks to a gas central heating boiler. You've got a kebab style heat exchanger like you'd find on a Worcester Bosch boiler, like one of the green stars. Um, one thing to note is the oil pump is actually mounted quite high up in here but it does come with two uh, long oil hoses. So to pipe it up on the left hand side of the boiler is definitely a little bit more tricky, um, more in regards to the insulation. So the pipework runs through here around the back and then you need to put a bend on it to get into those isolation fittings. The problem being is you can't pour 90 um, because you won't get it through. So you've either got a solder fitting, which we're not going to do because we don't want to melt the insulation or use a press fit tool. So we've got the flow and return pipe working now. It's a little bit tight with the press fit going, but we did manage to make it work. And yeah, we've almost like pre-plumbed it so we can get it close to the side of the wall. So for servicing reasons, you really need access to the right-hand side of this boiler more than the left. That's where the access panels are. So just bear that in mind. Um, obviously you've got your minimum clearances, but you want to give yourself a bit more room. So, like I say, these flues really similar to a gas boiler, and actually, I said they're Wiesmann, but I'm pretty sure I've seen these on ATAGs. But let me know in the comments if you recognise these. Right, so we're just starting to get the flue in now, and to be honest, I would have preferred just to come straight up vertically, but because it's the external model, we can't do that. There's not a slot in the top of this boiler to allow you to go straight up vertically. You have to come out through the side. On the internal version, there is so which it does make life a bit easier, but we've had to come out through the side. There's a grommet there, so it would be weatherproof if it was external. And we're just getting our brackets on the wall now to support the flue. And then we're gonna be running it along there, um, out through the flue terminal. Right, we've got the bracket in flue in now. Um, it's all nice and secure. We've got a bracket at every change of direction also within one meter of each other so we've gone through quite a lot of brackets one thing to note i would say is these flues they don't come with brackets provided in the extension pack so for some boiler manufacturers you get the brackets included but i've actually just taken some which i've got off the van which is a mixture of ideal and worcester ones but doing a job fine so yeah that's all good to go so the next part of the job is getting it piped up so we're actually going to be fitting a low loss header so you might be wondering why are we fitting a low loss header when we've only got one heating zone so the reason we are doing it is because the pump inside the system boiler i don't believe is going to be adequate enough to pump the heat around the house so what's going to happen is we've got the heat that's going to pump from the boiler around the low loss header and then the light commercial pump we've got in the manifold cupboard is then going to pull the heat from this and then circulate around the house. So the other reason is when I worked out the heat loss calculations for this house, um, it was about 27 kilowatts. So if they were to add any additional radiators or have an extension, it's gonna to be to the limitations of this new boiler we're installing. So I wanted there to be almost a simple way of joining up a second boiler next to it so we can all just run the pipework into this um, low loss header and then we can go from there so um, the advantages again of having one of these is you've got the AAV on the top here so this is going to be above our first first floor joist height so we can have no problems getting um, the water going to the manifold cupboard We've also got uh, dirt separation, so we'll be able to drain it off here. Um, similar to a magnetic filter, there's actually a magnet in the bottom of this low loss header here. And what else? <laughs> Looks really cool. So we're all piped up on the central heating side now and we're about to fill up the system. 
what I would say is there is no internal filling loop on this boiler. You do have to fit one externally. So for those of you that have been watching the Raw Renovation series, um, we've got one in a manifold cupboard, so it's not a problem. So now we're happy, all the central heating's full up and the low loss header and all the pipe work going to the boiler's all okay. We're now going to start on the oil line. Here's the existing oil tank and previously this property had an Arga and an oil boiler located in the centre of the house which obviously we've now relocated a new boiler in the garage so we are having to relocate the oil line as well so over here originally that green oil line that's the existing pipe it used to enter the garage at low level there run all the way to the end and then run underneath the front door and then underneath the kitchen window to the Arga and somewhere it teed off for the boiler but we can't actually run the oil line through the garage to get it to our new boiler location so we're having to rerun it externally for a trench so we've dug a trench 450 deep and we've actually got the pipe work in there already uh, the problem being is it's full up with water now <laughs> so over the weekend it's been absolutely pouring down it's full up so what we actually need to do is put 50 mil of sand underneath that new white pipe 50 mil on top and then backfill it to uh, approximately 150 mil left and then we've got to put some tape um, in the trench some warning tape just to let people know there's an oil line down there so because this isn't a garage and uh, we've sleeved the pie work all through here as per the regulations although you can't really see it now because it's totally full of water but what we are then going to do is going to come up here where this 10 mil just coiled up run the pipe work low level through this like flower bed and then we will have a tiger loop, deaerator, five valve, etc. here. And then we will run the pipe work through the wall into the back of the boiler. Okay, we're pretty much finished getting the all-line components in now. So we've got the isolation valve followed by the filter, then the fire valve, another isolation valve, and then the tiger loop. So we recently went to an Avian training course and they recommended you always put a DRA or tiger loop on these boilers. I guess it's because the oil pump is located so high, so it just protects the boiler and obviously uh, ensures that it's gonna be operational. So yeah, we'll jump inside now and um, finish those connections. Okay, so we've got the oil lines in now. As you can see, we've got the flow return in and out, whatever you like to call it. That is coming through the rear of the boiler. So on the rear of the boiler, on the left-hand side, you've got three holes with grommets in which you can pass pipes or cables through. This isolation valve here, which we've put on the flow, that comes with the Navian installation kit. And then also the hoses off the pump are very, very long. So if you wanted to bring the oil line in, um, on the bottom then you'd be absolutely fine so what you do need to be careful of is you don't want to bring any rigid pipe over the top of the main burner because that'll be in the way when you're servicing it so the fire valve location that is located here on the top right hand side and I've just brought it through here at low level so we're at the stage now where we're going to begin wiring the Navian boiler and um, when you purchase the boiler you can opt to buy this smart wireless kit um, you can also wire it in traditionally like a normal S plan with switch life, but we've opted to purchase the additional kit. So the reason I really like this is because this smart wireless thermostat, it offers geofencing capabilities. It also monitors your oil consumption 
And when you wire in all your controls, so your zone valves, external pumps, it all goes into this wiring center. And then this wiring center wirelessly sends a signal to the boiler, which in my opinion makes it fantastic. It means you haven't got to run extra cables to your new boiler location. So what we do is we'll get the wiring center on the wall and we'll show you how we're gonna start wiring it in. Okay, so we've got the Navion wiring center on the wall now, and this comes with the smart package that you can buy as an additional extra when you're purchasing the boiler. So the reason I like this is because it's quite self-explanatory where all the cables need to go from each component. You've got your zone valve, cylinder stat, and pump, etc. So from here, you don't actually need to run a switch live to the boiler location. It will wirelessly send the signal directly to the receiver unit on the boiler. Um, one thing to bear in mind is depending on what type of system and what sort of controls you're using, there are dip switches on there, so you need to um, refer to your manufacturer's instructions and get them set up correctly before you commission the boiler. So we're pretty much all wired in now and we've had to make a few alterations. Um, the reason being um, we've incorporated a low loss header into this system and this wiring centre only allows you to have a secondary pump on one zone but we need it to pump two zones so we've had to pretty much wire the zone valves up like a standard S plan so traditionally what you would do is you would just put your brown blues and your earths into here and you'll do away with your orange and your greys but we've had to link them together just to get the secondary pump operating so from this wiring center this wirelessly sends the signal to this wireless receiver so this wireless receiver can be mounted close to the boiler and then that will um, pretty much send the switch live to the boiler and tell it what to do. Um, the reason we've housed it so close in here is because there was already a cable that was running from the boiler room to this manifold cupboard so it just prevents any signal issues we may have in the future. So if you've got a solid blue light on the receiver unit and also the wiring centre that means that they are communicating okay together. There's a little red light here at the moment that just indicates we haven't set up the Wi-Fi and the app. So, like I say, that traditionally would be mounted next to the boiler. It comes with an orange cable, an orange plug. It's really easy to identify inside the boiler. Um, so, yeah, it's all up and running now. So, just need to tidy up these cables a bit and then we can go commission the oil boiler. So, on this install, we've actually chosen to install a Stuart Turner pump now. This is one of the first times I've installed this one and I'd just like to say how good the little light is on the side. So depending on what colour the light is, it shows you what speed you've got it set at. So at the moment we've got a maximum which is traditionally free, which is yellow. And then if you push it, you can go down to blue. And then also green. I just thought it was really handy, especially in a tight corner like this where you can't necessarily see what speed you've got it set at. So yeah, really good idea. Okay, so we've got the power on to the boiler now. As you can see, the digital display is all lit up. Um, it's quite simple to use. Just got this spinning wheel in the middle. Um, to get into the menu is this middle button. So it's very light to touch. You just tap your finger on it. We've still got a protective film on it at the moment. Go through all your settings, etc. So yeah, it's quite advanced. Let's go back to the main menu. So on here, you can see you've got your um, flow temperature inside on the left, and then if you had a combi boiler, you'd have your domestic hot water temperature on the right. Pressure gauge down bottom right, and then this electric panel, when you come to commission it, you can just undo a screw on the left and then flip it right out. And then inside here, you've got access to your um, oil pump, and there's another um, analog pressure gauge in there. On the bottom right hand side of the control unit you've got this orange cable and this orange cable is the one that you plug your wireless receiver unit to. When you buy the kit it comes with a long length of cable which allows you to install it very easily. So what I've actually done is I've run it up inside that fuse unit and joined it onto another length of cable and then I've run it all the way up to the manifold cupboard. 
So when you come to start commissioning the boiler, if you push back and menu at the same time, if I can do it one hand, you'll go into the service installer mode like this. And then when you start doing your pump pressures and your analyzer readings, if you go down to special operations, and then you can set it for um, heat low or heat high, and then you can um, check your parameters like that. So at the moment we're actually temporarily just terminating the condensed pipe into a bag so we're going to be putting a soak away in externally in the next couple of days and on the bottom right hand side of this boiler you can access the condensed trap as well as that the pressure relief valves under there as well and that is combined so it makes terminating the pipe work a lot easier and yeah it's all really accessible. What you would do is you would poke your condensed pipe through this hole here, connect this rubber tube up, and then if you're going external, um, connect it up to 32 mil. So that's it, the boiler's all operational, everything's working correctly as it should. And just to give you a bit more information about this boiler, it is a blue flame oil burner, it has a 10 year warranty. Navian actually produced 200,000 of these boilers a year, so although not a huge brand in the UK at the moment, internationally they are very popular. So my honest review of this boiler is it's a really great bit of kit. I really appreciate the thought and design process that's gone into it, and it will probably be the only manufacturer of oil boilers I'll be installing on my jobs. So hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into this boiler and how it's installed. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you on the next one.